Hello there. This is the family doctor. Keep away from hornets after this. <laughs> Don't you worry none about that, Doc. I sure will. Yep. <laughs> Just make sure they're honeybees instead of hornets. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. This sheer mud you slapped on my face and hands sure seems to help a heap. Yeah, you drop around tomorrow afternoon about 4.30, Hank, and we'll have another look at you. Well, uh, so long, Doc. How much you buy? Uh, oh, hello there, uh, Matty. Good morning, Mr. Hazen. Good morning, Dr. Adams. Good yeah, morning, Maddie. You next, are you? Well, I think I am. I should be. I've been waiting long enough. Well, come on in. Sit down in that big chair. <clears throat> uh, Hank Hazen's had a little trouble with his bees. He don't see as good as he used to. <laughs> Appears to me is how he'd see better if he weren't so vain. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Sila, that's what the good book says. Yeah, it does, eh? Doesn't say nothing about the women, eh? Not in that passage, it don't. <laughs> vain, how do you figure out that Hank's vain, Matty? Well, he won't wear them spectacles. The gold-rimmed ones that you sent away for him for says folks will think he's getting decrepit. Why, it's getting so he can't even read the court records he read. Uh, uh, you and Hank had another fallen out? Well, what if we have? That's our business, ain't it? And nobody else's. Yeah, 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 that's right. You're absolutely correct. Well, Matty, what's the trouble this time? Oh, Dr. Adams, that misery's come back in my neck and shoulder again. Hey, uh, there. What you been eating? Just what you told me. Half a lemon and hot water in the morning, an apple and some celery at noon, and meat and potatoes just once a day. That's all, and nothing more. Nothing more? Uh, well, I, I did go to the sociable last Wednesday. Oh, gee, there. Well, of course, I had to enter into the festivities life. Oh, yes, and, of course. Uh, well, they had some of Mrs. Phillips's lamb and curry. Uh-huh. And some of Mrs. Rankin's splendid watermelon pickle. Uh-huh. And some of Mrs. Mason's fresh homemade strawberry ice cream. And, of course, I, I took one of my angel food cakes with the boiled ice, and you know, Dr. Adams, the kind you like so well. Yeah, yeah I know. But you see, Maddie, I don't have any misery in my neck and shoulder. Uh, no, I... Maddie Clark, that's the trouble with you and people like you. You get something the matter with you, and then you expect the doctor to fix you up all by himself. Gosh, Jeff Friday, I, I... he can't do it, Maddie. Why, the human system just like that automobile of mine sitting out there in Maple Street. I've been driving that automobile for six years, and it's as good today as it was the day I bought it. Why? Because I don't go out and put a lot of coal oil and ether in the gas tank. Just because I think it'll it'll be entering into the festivities like. Oh, no, no sorry, I... Bob. And you can't do it with the human system, neither. Oh. Well, I'll give you some of these pellets, and then you stop into the drugstore on your way home and get Pete May to give you some more of that same liniment. And then, Matty Clark, you see that you stay with that diet list I gave you. Well... All right, Dr. Adams, but I... Oh, look. What's the matter? There she comes. Who? Judge Sam Windsor's girl, Faith. Well, what's the startling oh, about that? Oh, Dr. Adams, ain't you heard? No, okay, say the half. Why, it's all over town. It swept Cedarton just like the gales of Galilee. Lady Clark, what are you talking about? Well, you know Faith Windsor's the treasurer of a Sunday school class, the daughters of Naomi? Yeah, I heard about that. Well, they were all getting ready for the class picnic next Saturday up to Miller's Lake, and what do you think? I can't. The money's disappeared. What? Yes. All 
all the class funds has just been swept off the face of the earth, so to speak. And I ain't one to carry tales. Oh, of course not. But just at the same time, Faith Windsor came out with a brand new pink organdy. She wore it to the sociable last Wednesday. Well, hasn't Sam Windsor enough money to buy his daughter a new dress if he wants to? No, of course, if he wants to. Oh, it's a Friday, Maddie Clark. What are you trying to say? Well, I ain't one. Are you trying to say that little Faith Windsor stole that money? Of course, I don't know that she did, but it looks a mod heap suspicious to me. She had the money to her house, didn't she? The money disappeared from the face of the earth, didn't it? And then she comes out with a new organ day. Oh, well, Faith. Well, it's you that started all this terrible talk about me, and, and not one bit of it's true. Do you hear? Not well, one bit of it. You know I didn't steal that money, but you've got everybody in Cedarton thinking I did, and someday I'm going to prove I didn't do it. And then... And then... <laughs> well, I never... What's this younger generation to come into, talking to the elders like we was dumb animals? Uh, well... I uh, think I'd better be getting down to the drugstore. I don't want to delay putting on that liniment. Here's your pellets, Maddie. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you, Dr. Adams. I most forgot them. <laughs> well, uh, good day, Dr. Adams. Good day, Maddie. I hope your misery is better. The one in your neck and shoulders, I mean. Thank you kindly. Good day. <sighs> Not one to carry tales. Gosh, to Friday. <laughs> Judge Windsor. Going into the drugstore? Yep, I have to give Pete May some instructions about a prescription. Well, come in with me. I'll buy you a root beer. Oh, all right. I don't mind if I do. Tis my heart. Go ahead. I'll, I'm right with you. Hi, Doc. Morning, Judge uh, Windsor. Hello, Hello Pete. Pete. Well, what'll it be, gents? Well, I've decided to go hog wild and spend a nickel on Doc Adams. <laughs> Two root beers, Pete. Two root beers, right. Uh, you haven't seen your daughter lately in the last hour or so, have you, Sam? Faith? No. Why? Well, uh, well, she, uh, she was coming over for her penny royal, I think. Uh, she and the daughters of Naomi was to have a picnic next Saturday, I understand, and said something about the mosquitoes being pretty bad right now at Miller's Lake. Oh? Well, no, I haven't seen her. There you are, gents. Ice cold and a nickel of glass. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Well, Doc. Here's how. Eh? Oh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, you wanting anything else, Judge? My telephone's ringing. No, nope. oh, that's all for now, Pete. Here, here's your dime. Thanks. The girls ought to have a fine time on their shindig. Beautiful place, Miller's Lake. Beautiful. Yeah. Been thinking about buying some property up yeah. there. Good. Think it'll double in value in the next five years. Oh, Judge, it's for you, uh, Mrs. Windsor. Oh, thanks, Pete. Be right back, Doc. It's my wife, probably... Forgot to tell me to bring home a watermelon. <laughs> You've been busy lately, Doc? Hello? No, no, no. What? People in Cedarton are all What's pretty this? healthy. Right. Too healthy for you and me, eh, Doc? Right. Right. <laughs> oh, right. Of course, I didn't mean that. I'll bring him right with me. Hey, Doc. Hmm? Doc, you've got to come up to the house with me right away. Oh, well, what's the matter? Faith, she's very sick all of a sudden. Come on, Doc. We'll go in my car. It's right around the corner. Right. Oh, good morning, Judge. Good morning. Peter. Come on, Doc. Please hurry. Morning, Pete. Uh, what's the trouble up the Windsor's? Well, now, that's too bad. What is it, Pete? What is it? Eh? Oh, uh, my Mrs. Windsor just phoned the judge and told him Faith's awful sick. What? Got sick all of a sudden, she said. Faith's sick? Oh, well, all of a sudden? Well, I, I wonder what could be the trouble. <laughs> in water, and that white of egg did the trick. Ah, now you'll be all right, Faith. Faith, honey, your mother found it. What? Your mother found the money. She did? Oh, 
I'm glad. Uh, there now, Faith. Now you're going to be all right. Sure she is. As right as right. And she's going to have the best time on that picnic that any girl's ever had anywhere. Uh, you, uh, you don't mind telling where Mrs. Windsor found the money, do you, Sam? No, I don't mind. Young Sam Jr. took it. Sammy? Why? He was just playing a prank on you, Faith. Just oh. like a younger brother, he and some of the other boys decided it would be fun to hide those funds. So Faith and the girls couldn't go to their picnic. Oh, I see. And then, when they found out what people around town were saying about Faith, they were scared to give it back. But just as soon as I can get around to it, I've got a prank I'm going to play on him. With a hairbrush. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> well, Faith... I'll drop around again this evening just to see how you're getting along. Oh. To fix you up so as you can eat anything you want to on that picnic Saturday. Oh, thank you, Dr. Adams. Do you find your way out by yourself, Doc? Oh, yes, yes. After 18 years of coming around here, I should. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, goodbye right. now. Bye. See you later. <laughs> Well, we meet again, Dr. Adams. Oh, yes, Maddie, we meet again. Small world. Uh, Dr. Adams, I heard that Faith was ailing. Yeah, 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 she was. You'll be all right now. Anything serious? Well, it might have been. She ate some rat poison. Rat poison? Yep. She felt so bad about the gossip that was going on around town. You know, about the money. Oh, yes, the money. They found it, though. They did? But where was it? Young Sammy had it hid just as a joke. Oh. Oh, well, I'm, I'm so glad they found it. I'm glad, too, that Faith's are feeling better. Yeah. If you don't mind my saying so, Matty, I think you should be glad. Well, after all, Dr. Adams, I, I was just trying to do my duty as I saw it. Duty? After all, the scripture says, thou shalt not steal. Oh, oh I see. Yes, yes, that's the eighth commandment, if I remember rightly. Yes, the eighth commandment. Well, let me see. Uh, do you recollect the ninth commandment, Matty? Uh, I just... Don't seem to recall it for the minute. The ninth? What? Oh, yes, I remember it. It, it says, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. False witness. <laughs> oh, Dr. Adams, I'm so sorry. Ah, uh, you, Matty? <laughs> That's good. Doctor, I ain't never going to talk about anybody in Cedarton again. Never. I'm pretty sure you won't, Matty. And say, you'd best get on home now. And put some of that liniment on your misery. Yes, Doctor. There's the one in your neck and shoulder, I mean. I guess the other one will disappear of its own accord. <laughs> the family doctor. I'll be in to see you again right soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.